Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Partis 21. It's a Turkish Linux distribution based on Debian and it comes in the XFCE desktop environment. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, those links will be in the description below. Partis Linux. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at their website. And when you go to their website, it is in Turkish. So that's why you'll notice at the bottom, I'm in my Manjaro right now to show this to you because I'm translating it. Their mantra is for freedom. Open source Partis. It's created using the Debian GNU Linux infrastructure. It's an operating system that includes products designed for corporate needs. And you come down and it's got a few screenshots. Says that it's 64-bit. You can sign up for the e-newsletter if you want. And then, of course, they got a good news and announcement part of the website. And then you can kind of just go through and get different information about the operating system. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to close out of this and go back to the desktop. Back at the Partis desktop, if you download it, throw it on a USB or open it in a virtual machine, this is the desktop you'll be met with. There is no welcome screen. And when you do boot it, it gives you an option of doing it in Turkish or English. Of course, you can see that I chose English. You get one panel. And on that panel, you've got show desktop, you got log out, you got time, you've got notifications, you got power, volume, internet connection. And then right here, I believe that is power save. Let's click on that. Yes, it is. Extreme power save, balance, performance, extreme performance. So you've got a way to control power management right on the panel. So let's close out of that. If we right click on the desktop, you can create launcher, create URL link, open terminal. Let's go ahead and open terminal. And let's see if they have HTOP installed. They don't. Let's try top. They do. In this virtual environment in GNOME boxes, I have issued three gigabytes of RAM. At present, with just the terminal open, we are using 620 megabytes of RAM, which is extremely light. I've seen some around four or 500, but 600 is still real good. And definitely something if you wanted to put it on an older PC, you're probably going to have luck with because it's not a RAM hog. So let's go ahead and close that. And then open new window, arrange desktop icon, desktop settings. Let's see what we got over here. You've got three of the same wallpapers and then one that's just a dark background. But of course, it's easy to change those. You can add them. That's not a problem. Then you've got your menus. You can adjust your desktop menus, your window list menu, icons, file launcher icons, what you want to show on the desktop. If you don't want those showing, you can get rid of those. Show icon tooltips. You can do that. You can change the size of those tooltips. Icon orientation is to the top left vertical. You could actually drop them down if you wanted to, I guess. Yes, and it would move them around the screen, so you can adjust that. So just some basic settings right there, so let's close out of that. If we right-click on the panel, you can edit the panel. So we'll go to Panel Preferences. Right now it's in horizontal mode. Of course, you could change that if you chose to vertical. Then it would be over here. And then I believe you also got desk bar, which would just orientate everything a little different. Let's just go back to where we were, horizontal, automatically hide the panel. You can say never, or you can always hide it. I'll just go back up to never. And then row size, you can obviously make the panel a little bigger. There you see it's getting bigger. And then appearance, background, you can change the system style background to a background image, solid color. Dark mode, if you want to turn dark mode on, I think I'll leave that on. Adjust size automatically on the icons. You can turn that off, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it on because I like them a little bigger down here. And then items. You can add things down here. You can add anything from whisker menus, window buttons, date and time, show desktop. All you'd have to do is click add, pick the one you wanted to add, and it would put it down there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go down here to the Partis menu. You click on it. You've got favorites, recently used, accessories. You've got application finder, file manager. Let's go ahead and check out the file manager. And obviously this is Thunar. I like the look. I like the icon set that they're using here. That's really nice. And then over here, you've got your usual suspects. And then of course your home folders. It's just a light fast file manager that lets you get your work done and stays out of the way. So let's close that. Then you got calculator, screenshot, terminal emulator, graphics. You got document viewer, you get GIMP out of the box. You got Restretto image viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Internet. You have Firefox and Firefox ESR. 
multimedia, you got Pulse Audio Volume Control, VLC Media Player. Office, you have the LibreOffice suite out of the box. And then, of course, you have your settings, About Me, About Partis. Let's click on About Partis. It's Partis 21, Kernels 5.10.0-8. We knew that if it was going to be based on Debian stable. XFCE 4.16, and then 3 gigabytes of RAM. So let's close out about that. Settings, you can adjust appearance. Let's check out the appearance. Right now, we're in the Partis style, but if you went to Partis Dark, that changes everything to dark. I like that. Icons, we are using the Partis icon theme. If we went to the Partis Dark icon theme, doesn't really change anything. Has no cache file. You can create this by running GT. Okay, well, we're not going to run that update, so... We can go to fonts. Right now it's under sans regular. You can go over if you want to change the kind of font you're using. You can. If you want to make it bigger once you choose it, just come down here. And bigger or smaller. Let's go ahead and just make it bigger. Let's click select. And that just made everything a little bigger. And then settings. Show images and buttons. Down here you've got an X by close. You've got the life preserver by help. If you just go up here and click on that, those disappear. And then you just have buttons. So you can customize that however you want to. Let's close out of that. You got default application, Ice-T web control, install Partis, mouse and touchpad, notifications, Synaptic package manager. It does come with that. There's Synaptic. If you're familiar with Synaptic, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But if you don't use Synaptic on a daily basis, if you go over here and just click search and type in something like OBS, hit enter. You can see now that OBS is highlighted over here. And then right here, you've got OBS Studio. You just come over here and click mark for installation. Once it's marked, it'll give you a list of dependencies that are required. You can mark them all. Once you have them marked, when you want to install it, just come up here, click apply, and it will install it to your system. So that's a good place to get more apps and software and good place to uninstall the ones you don't want. So let's close out of that. And then back over, you got time and date, window manager, workspaces, and then of course system, the Partis greeter. You do have the GW package installer. That way, if you download a Debian package online, all you have to do is go to that package after it's downloaded, right-click on it. It'll say Open With. Just pick GW Package Installer, and it will install it from there. Then you got Gparted Packages, Partis Package Installer. Let's check that out. Okay, that's kind of like GW. So it's just another way to install packages. Let's go back up, and let's look at there's Synaptic System Packages. Okay. If you open up packages, it looks like you can pick packages from here too. So let's try Caden Live, nonlinear video editor. Okay. So you would pick that one and that one, and then you could apply the changes and it would install it. So you've got several different ways on here to install software or remove software. So there's packages, part is USB formatter, part is power management, part is image writer. So it's got a lot of its own apps installed, which is good. I like that. And then, of course, Task Manager. Let's check that out. Shows that we're about 4% of the CPU, 218 processes, running at about 936.7 megabytes of the three gigs that we have issued. So it's pretty light. I like that. It's a good-looking operating system. It's definitely a, a little cleaner take on XFCE, I do believe. Overall, a decent-looking operating system. So what do you think of Partis? Is it something you might download, throw in a USB, put in a virtual box, and give it a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee. Or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.